And now let's turn on the TV and tune into Nine's A Current Affair, which has once again been busy spruiking magic medicines. It's been more than six years in the making, and finally, researchers say they've made a breakthrough. The results are pretty clear and really promising. A natural treatment for ADHD that costs less than $20 a week. It sounds too good to be true, but not anymore. Too good to be true? Heavens, no! Lipronol is not just a breakthrough, it has the potential to change the lives of ADHD sufferers, a current affair claimed. And with help from Blackmore's PR company, it then lined up several kids and parents to tell us how much difference it had made. I could socialise better, I could exercise better, I could just think so much clearer. My schoolwork has improved since I've been taking it. I was just surprised that something which is so readily available worked as well as it did without any negative effects. Sounds great! And even better when you know how exotic this stuff is. In the clean, clear waters across the ditch lies the New Zealand green-lipped mussel. It's a treatment that can help uh, a percentage of people get significant relief. Back in 2010, when ACA did its first advertorial for green mussel extract, which is what Lipronol is, it claimed the pill relieved arthritis. Now it's curing ADHD. But what is the evidence? Well, ACA was reporting on a study by Professor Con Stau from Swinburne University, funded by, wait for it, PharmaLink, the Cayman Islands company that licenses Blackmores to manufacture the drug. This is not something viewers were told. But worse than that, ACA also forgot to tell us that the study found the drug didn't work. The results of the present study did not support the hypothesis that PCSO524 improves parental reports of hyperactivity, inattention and impulsivity in children ages 6 to 14 years over placebo. Yup. According to parents of those ADHD kids, Lipronol worked no better than pills which had nothing in them. So, how does that square with the current affairs claim that it will change the lives of ADHD sufferers or that it is a breakthrough? It doesn't. As Adelaide University psychiatrist Dr John Giardini told me to watch... It couldn't be further from the truth. And Dr Giardini's verdict is echoed by another ADHD expert, Dr Daryl Efron from the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne, who told us... No, it's not a breakthrough at all. It's a negative study. For kids with ADHD in the study, the drug did not help more than a placebo. Amazing, eh? So, how did they get it so wrong? Well... Professor Stow told me to watch in a statement that he certainly never called it a breakthrough and that ACA misrepresented him. And he told a colleague via email... I was interviewed for about 30 minutes where I described in detail the methodology and limitations of the study. However, ACA used two sentences. But some of the blame for turning Lipronol into a potential wonder drug must go to Blackmores and its PR company, who put out this media release which quotes Professor Stow describing the study's results as... Very exciting. And which highlights claims of tangible improvement in kids' behaviour, attention and hyperactivity, which A Current Affair faithfully repeated. They found a 34% improvement in bad behaviour at home, a 13% improvement in attention and a 10% improvement in hyperactivity. Problem is, if you read the study, it's clear those improvements do not apply to children who've been diagnosed with ADHD, only to those with milder symptoms. And as Dr Efron told MediaWatch... This is not new. We've known this for a long time. We sometimes recommend fish oil in kids who have mild ADHD. Fish oil? What's fish oil got to do with it? I thought this was green-lipped muscle extract. But turns out the active ingredient, omega-3, is the same which makes ACA's $20 a week not cheap for parents at all. Or as John Giardini puts it... Well, it's wasting their money on so many levels. And there is more bad news for a current affair, because Australian law lays down strict rules about advertising complementary medicines. And that's arguably what ACA was doing. As a result of which, Professor Giardini is lodging a formal complaint to the Therapeutic Goods Administration, arguing that Nine's broadcast breached the Therapeutic Goods Act the Therapeutic Goods Advertising Code and the Commercial Television Code of Practice. Nice one. If the programme is judged to have been an ad and the complaint is upheld, a current affair has won the trifecta.